Jesus, his health care, he practiced privatized health care. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 108 of The Virtue Signal. Yes, we've done 108 shows. And finally, uh, the well has run a little dry here for old Bill. We get great suggestions and we got great suggestions for our last show that we shot this week. But uh, after 108 episodes, we are going to turn the tables and my friend and colleague Alfonso Rachel is going to propose the topic. I have no idea what he's going to say. And so now you get to watch me sweat in the way that he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> let's 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 have it, man. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, we're going to we're going to exchange uh, sweat rolls here as me actually hosting the show. Come on, man. You know, you know, you're the expert, man. You've got the skills for that one. However, I know that <laughs> you, th you think I don't know that. I know that. You do that quite. What, what's that from? Give me that That's again. That's uh, Martin Short. Martin That's Short <laughs> um, uh, doing the, the 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 lawyer for tobacco. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! So okay, so a popular question out there, Bill, uh, still going on today. And uh, those who actually answer, they don't they don't want these people heard like like yours truly. But one of those questions is: Wouldn't Jesus be a socialist? Or they'll try to make the case that Jesus was a socialist, uh, leaning on having this uh, selective. Uh, uh, selective religion or selective uh, fidelity for Jesus all of a sudden when it fits their narrative. And uh, they can go ahead and call on, ignore everything else that he says, but call on him for when it comes to having a socialist economy. Um, they want to be able to invoke Jesus for that one and give uh, poor examples or or take examples out of context or misinterpret them for what they want it to mean in terms of Jesus showing that he would be this collectivist and, uh, you know, uh, your brother's keeper and, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, so what do you think, Bill? I mean, uh, do you think it's fair to draw on a figure that you want to ignore everything else that he says or try to shape it to fit whatever you mean? Um, and, and, but this right here, this, when it comes to uh, being able to get into other people's stuff, yes, we like this Jesus and we'll go ahead and follow what he says. Well, I don't have your theological background, but my first reaction is that Jesus could not possibly be a socialist because he wasn't a weenie. <laughs> and, and, and every socialist that I know on some level, even the murdering ones, are, are insecure weenies who want to tell other people what to do. Uh, the entire idea of a free society is persuasion rather than coercion. Mm -hmm. Really, when you get right down to it, that's the difference between a free society and a non-free society. Can you be persuaded to do something or do we have to force you? Because there are rules and, and standards that have to apply in a civilized society. And the question is, how do you get people to, to obey those laws? Do you force them or do you persuade them? Uh, persuasion seems to be the essence of, of the New Testament. The, I, I have not been aware of a single coercive element in the, in the story of Jesus Christ. Not one. I have practically uncountable examples of Proverbs and leading by example, which is really ultimately leading by example is the ultimate form of persuasion. Um, so if somebody said Jesus was a socialist, then my response to that would be, then why wasn't he an authoritarian? Because we have not seen socialism without authoritarianism. You could say nice socialism like, like uh, Sweden doesn't have any um, murderous dictators. You'd be right about that. But nevertheless, you don't have the option to not be in that system. It's just not, you don't have that choice. So, so the lack of, uh, the lack of, of um, oh, the word's right on the tip, I just said it a second ago, uh, coercion. The, 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 the willingness to let people decide for themselves whether they wanted to believe in this or not through example to me, is the ultimate expression of trust in that person as an individual rather than as a collectivist. And that would be my off the top of my head answer. Ah, excellent, man. You know, okay, now, one of the reasons why I, I think I wanted to talk about this is because we're seeing what's going on with uh, between Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And we see, obviously, Putin covets ukraine <laughs> okay so uh we can see we're seeing how bad coveting can that's go it's a great word by the way because that's what it is it's covetousness it's covetousness that's, that's exactly what it is yeah right and in doing so he's 
he's making a big um, show of theft. He's going and he's taking it, right? So he's in doing this. Are are people? You know, when, when people want to say that, um, you know, Jesus was a socialist and like you're saying, and uh, uh, there's a, this lack of coercion, um, Jesus doesn't work that way. And you got Putin who's going in there and you, people are getting to see this, how ugly socialism can get. Or even like, say, mm-hmm. for instance, with Canada, uh, people would say, right. well, socialism, I mean, well, you don't see Canada uh, behaving like that. And it seems to work out really good for people there. It's like, look until you do until you do. Right. Yeah. I just, I just did a moving back to America called the deep state surfaces. And I was making the argument that that totalitarianism was like a U boat that was below the surface and the truckers dropped some depth charges and forced that sub to the surface. Now we can see it. Now we know where it is and we know it's been there the whole time. That's right. That's right. Now to, to the, and, to the point of coercion. Now, people will say that, um, well, Jesus was coercive because uh, he talked about hell. And if you don't believe in him, you're going to go to hell. Um, That's not coercion. Ah, now, if I, I would like I would like to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, look, look, coercion, you can define words down to mean nothing. When people say that, when people, like when you hear social justice warriors say, uh, they they said that, that uh, that they don't approve of trans people, that's an assault on me. No, it's not. Hmm. The word assault has a meaning. And if you want to define assault down to hearing something that you don't like, then the word assault doesn't mean anything anymore. Hmm. So for me, the word coercion means forcing somebody to do something through threat of eventual violence. We pay our taxes through coercion. We don't expect that somebody's going to come and shoot us in the head if we don't pay our taxes, but we also do know that if we don't over a certain period of time, I've had some experience with this, uh, there will come a point where the state will, if you don't pay your, if you don't pay your, your property taxes, over time, policemen will come, men with guns, and take away your house. So that is coercive. It's not immediately coercive, but it is coercive mm. because everybody knows what the consequences for this mm. is. Now, <clears throat> obviously, there are a lot of laws that are good and important. You could say that if you if you don't pay your taxes, you're going to go to jail. And if you, don't, if you murder somebody, you're going to go to jail. And they're both true. The coercive power of saying to a murderer, if you murder somebody, then we're going to come and get you. Mm. That's coercion. And it's good coercion. Mm-hmm. But but when you talk about something like if you if you don't do this you're going to go to hell that is entirely internal that's he he's got no power to enforce that other than whether or not you believe him right there's no there's no I almost said there's no authority behind that but that's certainly not what i meant to say but there's no there's no physical threat it is a statement like any other statement Jesus says, if you don't, I am the way, and if you don't believe in me, you're going to go to hell. And Baal says, feed me your children, right? <laughs> so, so, so nevertheless, you've got, you've still, it's still in the realm of the theoretical. Certainly, it's possible to imagine, oh, maybe not, from a theoretical point of view purely, uh, if Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus can come down to earth and, 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 with God's assistance, can make everybody a Christian. Should be easy, mm-hmm. right? If, if, if God was able to create the earth and create people, he could certainly force everybody to be a Christian. And, and he could do it in such a way that they wouldn't even know they're being forced. They'd just been built that way. Mm-hmm. Could have built that into people, but he didn't. Why? Because ultimately when it comes down to it, so the whole reason I'm an individualist, not a collectivist, is because... An individual has to have the moral character. It is exactly what we talked about in the last episode. An individual and a society that is a free society has to be made up of people who understand that given the choice of doing the right thing and the smart thing, will take the right thing. You can argue whether that's inherent in somebody or not, but my my point is, is that everything under socialism is coercive. Yes. You may like it. And some people are born that way, but it is coercive. And as a small little example, the National Health Service in Britain, right? 
Not only do you not have another option, you are coerced into going to the NHS in Britain. Not only do you not have a private option, you are not allowed mm. to go to a private option. There was a kid a while ago, I'm embarrassed that I've forgotten his name, two, three years ago, and, and there was an American doctor who could treat him, and all they had to do was get him to America, and Britain wouldn't let him out of the hospital. They wouldn't let him out, because if they let him out of the hospital, and he goes to America and he's cured, that makes the NHS look bad. So that would be my argument in terms of of uh, Jesus being a socialist. And by the way, there's a hundred things that they, they may twist to say that made him a socialist, but he did say, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's and unto God that which is God's, mm. right? He didn't say, render everything unto Caesar, it, right? Indeed. Isn't that basically what socialism is? Here, here's everything, state. Now, give me my free stuff now that I've given you everything. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, that's that's definitely one that they've definitely uh, uh, misinterpreted. But you know, when the Lord says, don't fear the one who could destroy the body, to fear the one who could destroy both the body and soul in hell. This is the Lord saying, look, man, I've got I've got all authority to do this. The buck stops with me. You know, and and but here's the thing when it comes down to that coercion, it's just like you said, it's not immediate coercion. You have the free will. Just understand. That's it's like, right. look, you know, Jesus is like, look, man, I'm the longest and strongest arm of the law. I am the law. When it comes time for me to come and get you, I'm going to come and get you. Right. It's just the way that it is. But you go ahead and do you go ahead and, you know, and, and YOLO, live your life and stuff like that. But I've told you the truth. And if you want to play with those consequences, it is your free will to do so. It's not like in socialism, because when in socialism, when the state owns everything, sure, the state can come in and say, OK, this is what we're going to move around and, sh and shove people around and stuff like that. Jesus himself recognizes people's property. That's why he tells people, yeah, be generous. You know, be charitable. It's your stuff to do. So I'm not I'm not telling I'm not giving the state the authority to do this. I'm telling you, you go ahead and you do it. So when people say things like, <clears throat> excuse me, when they say things like render under Caesar, which is Caesar, this is a, a total liberal misinterpretation. It's, it's a bastardization of what Jesus was talking about. When Jesus says render under Caesar, under Caesar, when they when they try to trap him in that tax question, first thing Jesus says, like, OK, let me see that coin. Why does he want to see the coin? Yeah, let me see that coin. OK, so this this coin has an image of Augustus, right, or, or, or worshipful son of the God Augustus. So if you guys are paying tribute to this, you guys are paying tribute to a false God. You're already breaking the commandment of worshiping an engraven image. This ain't got nothing to do with taxes. You guys are already in violation. Don't come at me with some tax question. You guys don't know what you're talking about. So from there, I want you to render under Caesar, which, which is Caesar's, which is nothing. You don't owe him anything. There are taxes to be paid the right way, but to just go pay tribute to some guy uh, out of the fruits of your labor, I never told you to do that. You pay to God what is God's because to God you owe everything. And then people say, well, didn't Jesus pay taxes? Jesus paid temple taxes. Jesus didn't pay state taxes. Big difference. Well, doesn't the word say bring your 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 property to the emissaries and lay it at your feet, their feet at the emissaries? Yeah, the emissaries, not the state. OK, that's a big difference. And not only that, Jesus re and, the, and the disciples recognized the people's property. It wasn't state property. It was their property. Come and bring it to feet of the emissaries. So Jesus was no socialist in any way, because in order for you to have socialists, you have to have an institution of covetousness. You have to have an institution. That's of right. It's not going to work. It does not square with the commandments. So, you know, Jesus doesn't intrude upon anybody's free will. In order to free, have free will, you have to understand that there's consequences to make the free will to choose between. So, you know, um, you know, it's just like you said, Bill, you know, Jesus doesn't rely on anything like that. Even when he comes back and exacts his judgment, he that and, and even the word the word says that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. This isn't an act of coercion. It's, it's not anything like that. And even like you said, hell is, is not an immediate thing where it, it's coercion. It's, it's a sanction. It's an answer to a law. Uh, the Lord himself being the highest truth there is so high that it is in itself a law. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt. It's a law. I'm not going to make you believe it, but there's consequences to it. When the Lord says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, even that seems like it's an intrusion on free will. It's not an intrusion on free will. Uh, it's one of those things where, look, I guess I'm going to have to get you a, do you a favor so you can understand who I am, because evidently you're not do, you're not getting it. If I am no God, if there is no such thing, how am I making you kneel? If you are a God unto yourself, 
you can stay on your feet, but your knees will break under the weight of my power. To show you that I'm doing you a favor. Recognize me as God, just the same way he did with Pharaoh. He didn't take away Pharaoh's free will. It was justice. Pharaoh's heart was already hardened. Pharaoh was already under the assumption that he can impose, just like in socialism, what's yours is mine. I'll do with you whatever I want, right? And, and it's like God said, oh, that's cute. So you're a God on earth, right? If you're a God on earth, then how am I using you as my puppet? Doing you a favor, man. Learn it. <laughs> Learn it. Learn who I am. If, if you were going to make the case for a socialist religion, major religion, now, I have limited understanding of this, but if you were going to make the case, I would say you could make a much better case for Islam than Christianity. And the reason I say that, again, is because of coercion. Mm -hmm. In societies that have uh, fundamentalist uh, Sharia law, you don't get to pick your religion. Mm -hmm. And you don't even – you don't get to pick which church you go to. You don't have a choice. You don't get to pick your behaviors. You don't have a choice there either. There are people constantly enforcing the fact, and, if, and, and in extreme cases, obviously – which used to be a lot more common, if it turned out people found out you were Christian, you had a choice to either convert or be killed. So there is no choice in Islam. Everybody in, in an Islamic country is Islamic or they're killed. They obviously allow for tourism now, but you get the general idea, yeah. right? The thing about Christianity is it's entirely voluntary. Yes. And because it's entirely voluntary, it makes it a better club, hmm. you know, because the people that choose it are called to it by something in the teaching. And since the teaching is so beautiful and so and so uh, liberating, the fact that you are, have a choice is what makes it worthwhile. Mark Twain, when he was, uh, was given the, I don't remember if it was the Legion of Honor or the Legion of Merit or something by the French, and many years later, he was talking about he was going out into the streets of Paris and he said, I, I decided to wear my Legion of, of Honor medal so that I wouldn't stand out in the crowd. <laughs> that takes a moment. But basically what he's saying is the reason I wore my Legion of Honor medal, because I didn't want to stand out in the crowd by not having one. <laughs> Everybody had the Legion of Honor, right? Mm. What he was basically saying with that comment is, yes, it's a great honor. Uh, to be given the Legion of Honor or whatever it was. I, it, it may not have been the award, but that was the quote, and that was certainly the dynamic. But he's kind of saying, look, if, if everybody gets this thing, or so many people get it that you see it essentially everywhere, it kind of loses uh, the thrill, you know? It kind of loses the exclusivity. And, and this is one of the reasons why the military, even today, has such astonishingly high standards for the Congressional Medal of Honor. And the reason they do that is because they don't want to debase the currency. Mm. If they start if they start giving out, you know, if, if somebody gets the, and, 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 and this day may come, and I may live to see it, but if somebody turns out that they, you know, in the height of a battle, they basically said, I'm a transsexual and you can't do that, blah, 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 and they get the lead, and they get the Congressional Medal of Honor for that, then the medal is worthless. Mm -hmm. And so, this is the way I look at, at, at Christianity. It is, it is an opt-in system. I'm not to say that, look, when I was talking about Islamic countries during the Middle Ages, which presumably we tried to move out of, the same thing was, was true in, in, uh, in Christian countries. Uh, England kicked out all the Jews, 1500 or something. So I'm not trying to isolate Islam in that way, but the actual belief in the religion is voluntary. Yeah. And the fact that there are so many different uh, subsects or subclasses or sub, what do you want to say, theologies, right? You've got Catholics and Protestants, but among the Protestants, you've got Methodists and Episcopalians and Baptists and all the rest of it. What does that really say? Well, what it says to me is, is that different groups of people are bringing their values into that religion voluntarily, and they disagree with other people about the details because of cultural differences or whatever. We're all on the same team, but we don't, uh, we don't, you know, you may be in, you may be for uh, the mass, but I'm again it. And, and, <laughs> and yet, and yet the religion, uh, when I say the original, the religion allows that, I'm not talking about it allows it in terms of the clergy or the ecclesiastics or anything like that. I mean that, that, 
since it is an opt-in voluntary choice, the only admission you need to be, the only, the only qualification you need to be in that, in that club is to believe that Jesus Christ is, is the Son of God and your Savior and, and accept him in your heart. If you do that, then all of this other stuff, which people have fought a lot of wars over and a lot of people have died over, but basically it's irrelevant. That's the core belief. And the fact that there are so many different varieties of it indicates to me just how uh, how wide the appeal is and how and how voluntary it is. There is no... Uh, the, Jesus didn't lay out... He didn't, he didn't lay out years and years and years of design of how the church was going to function, right? He didn't, he didn't say we're going to have, uh, we're going to have uh, you know, bishoptrics and we're going to have uh, parishes. He didn't, no, he right. just said there's, a, there's going to be a church and, and, and I will be with you in the church. And that's basically, you guys figure it out. To me, all of these things are, are anti-socialist because they're so pro-individualist. Right. And one of the things I've learned in doing, in doing this for a while, and especially a lot of public speaking, a lot of questions, People talk about the party switching sides and all, all, all this stuff. Republican, Democrat, progressive, conservative. You know, I'm a conservative because I'm conserving classical liberal values. All these labels get muddy. The only distinction I've ever found that I thought held up across all of history was individualists versus collectivists. Mm. The Nazis were collectivists. The fascists in Italy were collectivists. The Soviets were collectivists. The Chinese communists were collectivists, and the Democrats are collectivists. Mm -hmm. Draw your own conclusions, but that's the only distinction that, that holds up over time. Do you believe that the state, the collective, is more important than the individual, or do you believe that the individual is more important than the state? And if you believe in any kind of a, of a state being more important than the individual, then you're a socialist. If, on the other hand, you believe that the individual is the most important thing, because if you protect the individual, you protect everybody. <laughs> if, you, if you're an individualist, then you have a choice of doing whatever it is you want to do. And that's the appeal of Christianity. It, it appeals to people on an individual basis. And, and everybody has to individually be baptized. Everybody has to individually reckon with their sins, you know, whether it's through confession or, or whatever. It is... It is an individual choice, and that to me is like the glaring quality of, of, of pure Christianity, not, not what churches have done, you know, in the Middle Ages again or, or whatever, but the, but, the, but the philosophy itself is, here I am, this is what I believe, I believe this because I'm the Son of God, and you can either believe that or not. And then you have people making choices, and that selects or elects a, a, a group of people who make that voluntary choice, who generally speaking are the people of the highest moral fiber, because that's who the message resonates with. Amen, man. And, and uh, if I could wrap this up, unless you feel inspired to, to drop another uh, pearl of wisdom, um, I'm, just I'm, like you I'm said, pearls. <laughs> it was just like you said, we're talking about voluntary, talking about choice on its face. Socialism is already going to interfere with choice. That's why it's not conducive with Christianity as it is. It's socialism is all about the elimination of choice. Yes. That's what socialism is. You don't get to pick your doctor or healthcare system. You don't get to pick your hospital. You don't get to pick what business you work for. You don't get to pick anything. You're a cog in a machine mm -hmm. and you will do what machine cogs are supposed to do. Yes. Yes. And the thing is, is that these people are under the illusion that society is go going to bear the burdens of what they assume is going to be free choice, which isn't freedom at all. So it's, it's, it's when you have people who draw on the word, like even say with, uh, from Paul, Paul gets a bad rap, especially when it comes to, you know, those who are more in, uh, 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 towards the, the free market idea and more of the, uh, the individual's idea. They, they see Paul as, as a heretic as far as that goes, but Paul is saying nothing of the sort. But when Paul says things like you're supposed to submit to authority, pay your taxes, give honor and respect to, it's like, yeah, Paul's like, yeah, you do that, but you got to square that by everything else that I said. 
All right. You, you can't, you're not supposed to submit to people who are not submitted to the Lord. You're not supposed to submit to people who are using their office. Yes. Is authority appointed by God? Yes. But even when God gives people authority, there are some people who do not do right by the authority and they get called out. So you're supposed to call them out when they're not upholding the authority. If they're, if they're taxing you in a way that is not conducive with the way the commandment is set up, it's like, look, they're taxing you improperly. They're coveting and they're stealing your stuff. So it's when you have people who take these things out of the word of God to fit their own narrative, especially like when it, ter- when it comes uh, in terms of like socialism and communism is going to do away with it altogether. Uh, but you do have those who are more collective, socially mi- socialist minded Christians and it doesn't hold up. So it, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I found another pearl between the cushions. Uh, <laughs> if I'm in a if I'm in a collectivist socialist society and I decide I don't want to do th- something, I don't want to go to that hospital. I don't like the looks of the National Health Service Hospital. I'd like another hospital. I don't have a choice. However, in an individualist society, if you say I want to be a socialist, knock yourself out, man. You know, knock yourself out. If you want to say, I don't believe in Jesus, that's your choice. I want to do drugs. Okay. <laughs> you're, an, you're, you're, an, you're an individual adult. You have a conscience. You have, you have free will. And when you hear people, especially young people, arguing in favor of socialism, that distinction, in a socialist society, you do not have the option to be an individual. But in an individual society, you do have the option to be a socialist. That is a, that is a feature Right. And I would I would have no problem at all with with government funded health care, single payer health care, if. It were simply one out of 100 choices of what I could do with my health care dollar. Right. If 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 the government run health care system was just another choice I have and the socialists want to do that, knock yourselves out. But that's not how it works. Government funded health care puts private health care out of business because it prints money. (laughs) <laughs> and so I no longer have the choice. I'm willing to give socialists the choice. I'm willing to let them say whatever they want to. If they, if all the socialists in America got together and decided we want to have a single payer government sponsored health plan, I'd say knock yourself out. Except that, don't enforce it on other people. And if the government is printing the money to pay them, then you're taking away my choice. And listen to how that sounds uh, in in context of of. Uh, uh, of you know modern events, you're you're taking away my choice. That's right, man. and and uh, uh, for those who um, really want that national uh, health care, uh, just please consider that Jesus, his health care, he practiced privatized health care, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was unmatched. He made house calls. <laughs> That's yeah, right. He made a lot of house calls. Yeah, unmatched by anything else that anybody could do out there. One on one, baby. That's right. Folks, if you enjoyed the uh, the content here, I hope that you will check out BillWhittle.com, become a subscriber, uh, or make a donation to help us keep the lights on. We're so grateful for uh, uh, for your support. And uh, shares, uh, if you find it uh, within you to share these videos, that's also very helpful too. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for Bill Whittle and I in The Virtue Signal. Mm-hmm.